Here we are, episode 47. A little bit late tonight. That's fine. I've got uh, Rachel with me and Eric. We should be seeing Kyle tonight, who plays our three and join us in a bit, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, Jesse will be sitting this one out as well as Dizzy. And we're going to pick up where we left off, do a little recap here in a moment. But as you can see on the map, we are in the middle of a combat. I did add a new token there for Jesse's, or Sheppy's Flaming Sphere. i got to change the color. It's glowing blue at the moment, but that's okay. That'll be fine. And, yeah, episode 47, Abomination Vaults, Pathfinder 2, Goodness. And we're about to get started with our Sunday sec session. So, let's do a recap. A little abbreviated recap. Rachel started off. Eric will pick up, and you guys will get extra hero points. Uh, so you'll be you'll have two. Uh, Eric and Rachel, both your characters, you'll be running Sheppy tonight. Both will get a hero point as well. Okay. So, well, first of all, let's do a introduction. Go ahead and introduce yourself and your characters, plural. Rachel. Hello, I'm. Rachel. I'm playing Althea. She is a gnome cleric. Uh, she has headed out on this adventure with this group of people, uh, some of them oddballs, uh, all of us oddballs. <laughs> uh, but she's enjoying the times that they spend together, uh, other than when, you know, they're in trouble, like they are currently in. Uh, and I will also be playing Jesse's character, uh, Sheppy, who is a goblin sorcerer and i apologize i will not do him justice in role playing wise because i can't do a really good sheppy voice like jesse and even fritz can <laughs> so i'll just be playing him mechanically <laughs> and that's who i've got today fantastic we do have some of our other players joining us we've got dizzy as well as kyle who just made it in so Let's kind of pick up where we left off or repeat things. I think, Rachel, you're all good. We'll pick up with our uh, introductions with Eric, and then we'll go to Dizzy and Kyle as well. Okay, so Eric, uh, give us your introduction once again, my friend. So my name is Eric. I'm playing a human monk named Cassandra, a young woman who has found her way to Atari and joined up with the group of heroes in order to try and understand the world around her. Very angry at the death of Alessandra the Tiefling and is now set to bring down whatever evil is causing uh, this corruption in the Abomination Vaults. Awesome. That was brief. That was good. Uh, Alessandra, uh, you, uh, I don't think you were a Tiefling, though, Alessandra. Where are you? you were a Sorry, a Dampier. Dampier, yeah, that's what it was. Rin Savixi, that's the tiefling that we all know and love. <clears throat> Maybe that's where you get that from. Okay, Dizzy, how about you? What's going on? Introduce, kind of introduce. Well, you can't really, can you? But uh, at least make yeah, a... I'll, I'll, I'll leave the little details for later. Okay, give us a player introduction and who you've played so far and what your plans are. You can hint at it. Well, I have played Alara, who was the damp here necromancer who sadly passed away. I have also played Alessandra, who was a damp pure gunslinger who sadly also passed away. So, uh... I wonder why. <laughs> and you got something in store for us, don't you? But we'll get to I that. Do, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off from. And giving out the details. You are. And all I'll say is that I'm, you can see her picture right now kind of gives you a hint on the screen and the name Agatha. And all I could say, it's something to be pretty excited about. I worked quite a bit fitting her into the campaign and it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. It might. We'll be seeing her tonight. Okay. So let's be excited. And of course, my good friend Kyle. How you doing, my friend? Give us your intro. 
Uh, nursing two cracked ribs, but how you doing, guys? I'm I'm Kyle. I play Arthurian, the battle-hardened dwarven fighter of the group. Uh, sort of the the upfront sword and board, loud mouth in the front line. Who likes to get bloody, crack some heads, headbutt some people on some hips. A lot of hip head buttons going around here because I'm well short. Can't reach their heads, so we go headbutt them right in the hips. That's how we do things around here. And uh, really excited. Last week we took down one of the creatures that uh, that killed my previous character, Marshall. And we're about to tag up and uh, neutralize the other one. It's gonna be a party, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be a party. This dwarf is swinging for the fence. You are fantastic. We'll see how good you do tonight. It's going to be crappy, Fritz. It's going to be crappy. Uh, we all know this. I'm going to die. Perhaps. Uh, we do have a little icon there for Sheppy's Flaming Sphere. I'm sure you guys can see it. That's where it sets. It's in that white space there. I should probably get that note off the map. Let's do that. And, yeah, we're ready to go. Now, as far as a recap, uh, Rachel, you want to start us off? And Eric, perhaps, jump in and finish off the recap briefly? Go for it. Sure thing. Ah, so, last session, last week, we entered the cave to find Carmen holding a sword, but not any sword. It is the sword that we're looking for. At least we believe it to be. Um, Arthurian approached Carmen uh, while everyone kind of remained in the shadows and tried to reason with him, uh, but he continued to refuse. He's like, no, I don't want what you're offering. Uh, you know, I'm not going to join you, whatever. Uh, Althea kind of joins in. Um, after Arthurian explains the purpose of involving the altar and, and why Carmen should be joining us. But Althea joins in and the two of them work together to find a way to get Carmen to join. And of course, after uh, so a lot of bartering and talking, he finally joins us with some conditions, of course, which were to let him keep the sword afterwards and, of course, not to mention him to the guards who are you know, actively looking at him for this theft. Uh, but immediately following this interaction, the companions, uh, plus Tamira, who had been traveling with us, and Carmen, we return to Otari to find Cassandra. And instead of going uh, to town, like into town, they head to the Gauntlet. And instead, Binley was sent as a messenger to... Uh, kind of uh, attract Cassandra out of the gaunt like not the gauntlet but the Dawnflower library because uh, she was there doing uh, research of her own uh, some very personal research uh, she had help perusing these books from Solanus uh, who works at the Dawnflower library and through the many tomes uh, she found something uh, possibly she was looking some, for something responsible for the ransacking of her village, if I believe. Um, she, Cassandra experienced like uh, images of glowing green eyes, a great tree, and a serpent. Um, after these very obscure uh, and you know hard to decipher images, uh, she did encounter Binley, and despite not knowing. This li who this little mouse belonged to or what he was, she decided, you know, stranger things have happened. I should probably follow the mouse. <laughs> so she does. Um, and they were reunited and the group had headed head down the Contlight uh, back to the Ghost of Otari to retrieve some sort of armor or some sort of a sack. Um, now... Whoever wants to take the take on the rest of the recap, go for it because I had to hop off. 
Oh yeah, and you missed one hell of a party. Uh, yeah, we had to go back in and, and speak to Atari once more. <sighs> Unfortunately, Sheppy was was knocked down and knocked unconscious. Arthurian made two trips. Got Sheppy out. Uh, took a took a pretty good beating. And while Alessandro was, was holding the doorway, uh, dragged Sheppy and the uh, ghost of Atari said that the object that we were looking for was in his bag. Uh, so we beat feet and got the bag, threw it on Sheppy, dragged Sheppy out of there, trying to get some sort of, of clarity, get out of the room, get out of the situation uh, type of deal. And... Uh, Alessandro was was knocked out, knocked down. So I believe Cassandra, you and I went in there to wait in there to uh, go get her. Yeah, that's true. Brought her out, and we went back to the one safe room that we know, and the Abomination vaults, knowing that we'd have to bring their bodies back to Atari afterwards. So we did press on to place the icons where they belong so we could bypass the magical barrier. And that's where we're at right now, because as we were approaching, we were set upon by the Guardians, a couple of, I believe they're called Cairn Whites. And so uh, since that happened, we paused in the middle of a combat because these things were just very difficult to put down. And they hit you, and they drain your life, and they're overall extremely unpleasant. They live up to their name of Tomb Guard very well. They are giving us one hell of a fight. Now, I did have a question. That flaming sphere that is on the enemy did that appear to have any type of effect or was it evaded i believe it was evaded okay just for future flaming sphere fun <laughs> i believe that he tried to put it in there but the thing had passed its reflex save mm -hmm. oh did. darn it helped to take out the other one though Oh, okay. This 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 particular white you're faced off against with right now hasn't really been uh, effectively damaged yet. So it's he's, about to be. He's good to go. <laughs> but yeah, that little flaming sphere that I got there, it's actually in his square. So that's where you'd move it from when it's Sheppy's turn. He could move that with a sustain spell. All right, so we'll jump back into this. Um, and, yeah, you guys get extra hero points for the recap. So make sure that's done. Including Shep. Yes, can I have mine? And she's not even in play yet. But okay. I'm not even there. <clears throat> All right, I think you have mine to Sheppy. Uh, gotcha. All right, so we're going to jump back into combat here. We are top of the fourth round. Cassandra, you're up. So go ahead. Let's see what you do. It says you're unconscious and down. Is that right? Yeah, she was knocked down and then healed. Okay, I forgot about that. So you're wounded one. Sorry, I was on mute. I was knocked out, uh, and it was close to midnight. So I bailed, but I think I remember Jesse saying, do you want us to use your hero points so that you recover? Yeah. I don't uh, know if that's what happened. Kyle, no, is that Diz, what happened? Diz used uh, a healing spell from Althea and put out a, a big burst of, uh, okay. of healing there. Something like that. All right, but 
you still have the wounded one condition. Okay. I, I seem to have two... Um, I seem to have two... Uh... Yeah, you'll have to bear with me with that. It's It was screwed up on my end, too. Ever since I updated to Pathfinder's newest upgrade, I've the the settings are a little bit weird for the tokens. It's showing names of everything. It's got duplicates of the conditions on your token. You know okay. something curious? All of that went away. I just noticed it. Everything looks normal to me now. Hmm. The names aren't there. There's only a single icon for conditions. Okay. I did change it while you guys were talking, so it looks right okay. to me. Well, it but, works. It works. But it comes back when I refresh the page. Uh, but if that's the case, maybe you need to refresh the page, and maybe it'll show up right for you. I'm not sure. No, I, th I think I'm okay. Uh, so I will, first action, I will stand up from prone. You are wounded one, though, correct? Uh, I don't see anything. Uh, I don't see wounded one on me. No, sorry. You should be. Yeah, maybe it was forgotten, because if you, if you healed and got back up that way, you'd still be wounded. Yeah, no, I know the rule. I'm just, I, I, I wasn't there when it happened, so I, I'm not sure where the condition went. Um, Do you know how to put it on your token? It's right click on your token and you'll see the little condition menu on the right side. The little guy bursting. <clears throat> click yeah. that and you'll see all the little conditions. And the wounded one is the one that looks like a red cross. Left click that one time and it'll put you at wounded one. Got it. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'll get up from prone and yep. then I will cast a spell. You have spells? <laughs> yes, focus spells. As a you monk. do. You do. I do. And. Key hmm. powers. It, it should be 16. Put it in the chat. I thought I did. Wholeness of body. Yeah. It should be 16, though, because it's not. It doesn't seem to be automatically. Uh, Heightening it. You heal yourself with one of the following ways. Choose from cho chosen by you when you cast a <clears> spell. <throat> Regain eight points. Attempt to cure one poison or damage afflicting you. Attempt to counteract the affliction. So you're going to heal eight points? Well, that's the thing. It should be heightened. 16 because of the. It should. It doesn't seem to be automatically heightening it. Yeah. So give yourself 16 hit points. We'll look at that later. Okay. Something to do with your character sheet. Because it should do that. It should heighten it. Yeah, it should. <clears throat> okay. And... That was an action. Yep. So it's, that's two actions I've taken so far. And I will go back into tiger stance. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now that's something I think you could drag to your sheet too. Or your it token. Is. Which is cool. There it is. Go ahead and do that. Stance. Tiger stance. Did you do that? Yep, done. There it is. Excellent. Little lion. All right, you're finny. And yep. it's time for the bad dude. Oh, the other thing I have to turn on is the the turn thing, that little thing that revolves around your token. Shows it's your turn. I forgot to turn that on again. Oh, well. Um, yes? Quick question for the gods. Uh do you still want me to do what we talked about yesterday for the turns, or do you want me to hold off on that? For the moment. Let me go through a round. Gotcha.
All right, Arthurian. The creature looks at you and raises its blade once again to strike down hard upon you. So you square Good. off with Kill me. Him. Get it on with it. Oh, that was a public roll. That's okay. We'll keep it. Let me make it. Ah. That's a hit. Not for it. <laughs> Let me make it blind so we can hide that. <laughs> well, we'll pretend that didn't happen, but. Oh. <laughs> there. Hit, not crit. Okay, let's roll some damage. And make a fortitude save for me. Public or blonde? That's going to be... Well, it could be public in this case. Go ahead. Eighteen. Okay. And that was its strike. It took some damage there. And it sees the flames around its feet, and it begins to withdraw away from you, Arthurian, defensively. I will take that attack of opportunity. You will. And uh, how much damage did it roll? I already applied it to your token. You took you, you took seven. Thirteen. I don't think that's going to be enough, Fritz. Nope. Your mace, I believe, crashes against the wall. Stone flying everywhere. So you try and catch him as he pulls away. And what else? Let me see. Let me see if I could do something here. As he pulls back with his blade at the ready. He lets out a horrendous scream. He looks towards you, Cassandra, and you, Arthurian. Arthurian, you're up. How do you react to that horrible sounding scream coming from its voice? Uh, I'm going to laugh at it, uh, and then I'm going to, with my Warhammer two hands, I'm going to advance. Okay. You want to unpause the game for me, Fritz? You are welcome. Thank you. And I'm going to strike it. Okay. I will hero point that right now. Nineteen. Nineteen is going to miss. Give her one more for the old college try. Twelve. No, not good enough. Okay. Althea, you're up in the back. <laughs> I'm just still freaking out that a 19 missed. <laughs> um, I think I, oh, I don't want to move myself. There we go. 30 feet. I'm going to cast Moonbeam. Let's get that in chat. Roll my attack. So Althea is casting uh, her spell and uh, really focusing on it to get this, this beam of moonlight towards the character, the creature, I mean. Uh, while avoiding Arthurian. <laughs> Duck! Shh. Right, he'll have an armor class bonus, but go for it. <laughs> uh, I got a 26 attack. 
You hit. Full damage. And it is six fire damage. This also counts as silver in case there's any particular resistance any or anything of the like. Particulars? <laughs> so that was six fire damage. Yes, and since it was successful, the target is dazzled for one round. Put dazzled in there. I know it's... I want to look at oh, it. Oh, um, it's in the chat on the moonbeam description, so okay. you can drag. Okay. <clears throat> so I essentially blinded it, and now it needs to... Kind of search for where we are. Well, you didn't get success. You didn't. You didn't get a critical success. I know. No, that. it was a regular success. It becomes dazzled. The beam deals full damage, and the target is dazzled for one round. So dazzled. Let me look at dazzled. For this, for for until until my round, not my round, until the round returns to me. So essentially as she's shooting this moonbeam out she's like Arthurian duck everyone close your eyes <laughs> um yeah so she's still acting and darn hard decisions she's going to cast another spell uh, this time, one of her innate spells. <clears throat> Guidance. And she will direct this towards Arthurian. Thank you kindly, my lady. And just remember, it's a plus one to attack roll, perception, saving throw, or skill check. Roger, roger. You could drag that to your sheet. I did. Oh, he sure did. <laughs> uh, all right. I've exhausted my actions. Okay. Next up, Sheppy. <laughs> you know what Sheppy's going to do. He's... He's got that flaming sphere. Yeah. It's currently on this space, correct? No, it's actually behind Arthurian. It backed away. The How? The creature backed away and Arthurian advanced. The uh, oh. creature backed out. <laughs> See, it didn't look like you guys moved at all. <laughs> because well. it's kind of the same order it was. Um, all right, so... I will have Sheppy sustain the spell. Wouldn't want to lose this spear. Did we decide how far it can move? It's Is it like its normal movement for a flaming spear? Well, it says in the spell. Put it in the chat and we'll see. I think it's like 25, 30 feet maybe. Here it is. Let's see what it says. 30 feet. 30 feet. You can move it anywhere within your range. So anywhere within 30 feet that you can see, you can move it. But you can't. It stops as soon as you move into a square occupied by friend or foe or a cockroach. And that creature <laughs> has to attempt a save. And it stops there. So what you want to do is move it around Arthurian so you don't want to go into his Oh, yeah. Hey, what are you doing? It's also moving around the cockroaches or whatever filth, <laughs> uh, living filth, mm -hmm. <laughs> might be scattered on the floor. And it's going to direct <clears throat> the sphere towards the creature once again. All right, roll your damage. Hey, burn! Take that! Ooh. 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 So it would be 11 fire damage if it failed that's reflex all right you got 11 correct so that was and just one action oh fancy 
Hold on, let me describe what happens as this flaming sphere mm -hmm. evades. Uh, well, you move it around, Arthurian, but as it enters the square, this creature was obviously not paying attention and not aware that this sphere had followed him. And it just erupts up his legs and up his torso. <laughs> into a massive explosion of fire. Arthur, and you kind of pull back away, and then the flames fall back down to a reasonable size, and it continues to hover there. But while this happens, this creature screams. <laughs> a horrible scream, which I won't do here. But, yeah, and it echoes through the chamber. You got a critical on that. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that hurt. Fire damage. Okay. Sheppy looks very pleased with what has just happened. <laughs> yes, 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 burn! All right. <laughs> so he sustained. He did the spell. Now what? Is that it? No, that is far from it. <laughs> I get nervous playing Sheppy. So many spells at my fingertips. <laughs> All of the power. Um, so it is fairly close to me, so I have quite a bit at my fingertips. Sheppy is going to send more flames in its direction and cast Produce Flame. Oof, just the 19 to a hit. Oh no, I can't hear you. I saw you doing dramatic movements, and I'm like, no, he's being really cool. I'm missing <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, let me see, what did I say? Oh yes, the, the flame singes the top of Arthurian's head. <sighs> as it goes high and over the over the target and disappears into the darkness beyond and fades. Arthurian bellows, Shippy. <laughs> it wasn't the beard this time. We'll pay <laughs> for that way. in a moment there, buddy. <laughs> Cassandra, you are up as flames appear in behind you and disappear to the darkness ahead. You're up. Okay, so making sure not to go within reach of the skilled warrior. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, halt. Don't go any further. Stop. I'm going to move you back. Right here. Uh, give me a roll here. Give me a second. <clears throat> give, give, give me a a will save as you step into this chamber. This could be public or whatever, just roll it. Okay. As soon as you step foot into this new chamber, uh, where this blue glow is just up ahead, you see shadows of movement out of the corner of your eye or near the shrine. You feel a sense of darkness and negativity as soon as you step in here, but you shrug it off, and then once again your attention goes back on this, this more immediate danger, this creature that Arthurian is engaged with. And go ahead and put yourself where you were, right behind it. Okay. Okay, and finish your actions. All right. So these are two strikes. Ooh, I'll hero point that. Try 
trying to hear a plant. Hold on. Um, hmm. I do have a hero point. Don't you just right click it and it should say reroll with hero point? There we yes. go. Twenty one. Second one. That's a hit. All right, so I'll roll this damage twice. Ugh. So it's eight total points of damage. And it needs to make a fortitude save. What's your DC? 20? 20. And it shrugs off. You're stunned, I believe, right? Yep, okay. And then I have one action left. I will step 10 because I'm in tiger stance mode. And a turn. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think I got that set up. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. And you back away from this creature that you have stricken uh, or struck, and that's where you're at. This thing start to glow behind you, or will be. Uh, anyway, let's go to the next creature. Just the white. Now it's got to make a because it's dazzled. How long does that dazzled last? Do you remember? A minute, I think it said. Uh, that was if it was critical success. It is there until the beginning, or possibly the end of my turn. It's one round essentially. Okay, so it's dazzled. All right, it's going to attempt to hit you, Arthurian. It needs to make a check here to see if it can. It does so. Yeah, since you are considered concealed. It's going to attack you once again with the blade. <clears throat> okay, and it hits. It's not critical. It's going to roll some damage. You're going to have to make another fortitude save for me as this blade cuts into your flesh and through your armor. Blind or public? Uh, go ahead and make a public. Fifteen. Good God. And the fifteen. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, 
Okay. You're drained condition. Should yeah, your drained condition goes up. You're feeling weaker and weaker as this blade penetrates. All right. And <clears throat> with that you start hearing a humming noise coming from this creature it seems to be chanting as it looks down upon you Arthurian raining blows upon you that have been quite devastating everybody will need to make a will savings throw as this chant begins to echo through the chamber Cassandra you as well and Agatha, you go ahead and make a will save as well. Did you want this blind or public? Blind or public. It should be blind, but if you want to do it public, go for it. I'm not going to complain. It's fun to see the die rolls. All right. I sent mine, Althea, then Shepi's. Okay. What does that say? I can't read it. Sheppy, you're frightened. Sheppy and Althea, you're both frightened one. So I'll put that on your token. Everybody else? Sheppy and who? You and Althea and Sheppy. Oh, darn. Okay. <laughs> so both your rolls failed. Bravery. When you roll a success and a will save against a fear effect, get a critical success instead. All right, Ethereum, you're good. So I believe everybody's good except Althea. As this chanting. As it echoes through the chamber, Althea, Sheppy, you both begin to look left and right, and you're beginning to, to get nervous, you're getting scared. What is this? There's more of them. The, the coffins are opening. I, there's more of them, I tell you. That kind of thing is going through your mind. Uh, how about you, Agatha? I got used to your name. Dizzy, are you there? Diane? Go ahead and make a will save. Blind. Will do. And while she does that, we're going to go on to and you said a blind will save blind will save gotcha Gonna reveal something on the map. A strange glowing begins to appear behind you, Cassandra, like as if torchlight was approaching. I guess it's that one. You see this this glow, and you all you all can see this this glow begins to appear at what looks like a shrine. Actually, you know what? Let me read this, since you're kind of in this new location. I'll try and paraphrase this. 
since you're not completely in here. This vast, octagonal-shaped room, Cassandra, is before you as this light begins to approach from behind. As you turn and look towards the corner of your eye to the right and, and begin to bring into view what looks like some type of stone structure in the middle of this chamber. It's circular, 15-foot diameter, perhaps. Sitting in the middle is this larger stone, and it seems to be from one of the cracks. It looks like a crack or something in the stone. This light begins to appear, a light that has no form, no shape. It just begins to appear, and it, in an almost whispery fashion, it begins to rise. Althea, in the distance, you see this glow. Sheppy sees it as well, begin to appear. It somehow looks familiar to you. You've seen this before, earlier. This strange glow, wispy-like glow. And it begins to appear out of this stone. Okay. And about five foot diameter, you see this this orb. I want to I want to say wispy, like a almost like a ribbon shape, but it doesn't seem you can't really see what's emitting this light. It's not blinding, but it's enough to emit light in a small five foot radius area. It appears above this stone and it begins to move towards you, Cassandra, and the rest of you can see this light appear and begin moving. Uh, and it gets right up behind you. And then suddenly, okay. and then suddenly, as it appears right next to you, Cassandra, it begins to move about and flicker back and forth in some strange fashion. I need you to make a will save. This will be blind. As it, it, it's, it's kind of trying to wrap itself around your head. So give me a will save. It doesn't seem to be a, touching you or attacking you directly, but it's. It's very unusual looking and odd, confusing in a way. But you shrug it off. You are far too well trained for this. And you pull away from it. You pull your gaze away from it briefly. Okay? Okay. So that happened. And... You see that on the map, right? You see this strange, wispy creature behind you, correct? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. You, you also see more of them. Another one also approaches, coming right alongside the next one, and does the same similar thing, to the point where these creatures are almost wrapping around your head, and it's like they're just doing this dance all around you. You need to make another will save, blind. Okay, you're okay. Uh, I don't think, well, let me see. That one. This one. Mute, Eric, I'm hearing that again. background noise <clears throat> all right a third one appears and also comes up behind cassandra and once again cassandra go ahead and make a blind will save as you're just surrounded by these wispy glowing tendrils or whatever you want to call them okay you are okay actually you're okay at this point i shouldn't be asking to make any more uh, all right, so there is a fourth one. And I think you guys can see these in the initiative tracker. 
as well as on the map. They should be appearing in both spots. I got the names hidden, so hopefully you can't see them. Although you might see them on the map. Uh, All right, so another one moved there, Cassandra. You can see where it's at. Arthurian, you see these lights appearing in the room beyond. You can't make it out entirely, but they're these strange, wispy-like, glowing creatures that you could just see beyond the white that is facing you. So you're not too paying too much attention to them, but you definitely notice them. What do you do? You're up. Okay, I'm going to keep focusing on this Karen Wright. Tomb guard, as I call him. Twenty-eight. That strikes hard into the creature. You do normal damage. It'll be ten points of bludgeoning damage. Nice. Warhammers, baby. Dwarf and a warhammer. That was a brutal hit. It feels it and it shrieks. I'm going to be that guy and give it another try. 19. You miss. Right. I'm going to do... I'm different. I'm going to headbutt it right in the hips. Fifteen. That's a miss. At least I got the one. Your head bashes against the wall. I'm going to stand there and taunt it in Dwarven and all these profanities. So anybody that speaks Dwarven, you would probably have uh, flushed cheeks hearing what's coming out my mouth. Not a clue. <laughs> Arthurian sure sounds angry. <laughs> I'll tell you what I called it later for now. We need to get this right down so we can go work on them things around Cassandra up there. Do they seem threatening, Lassie? And that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. See where is this? I have to double click this. Oops, don't do that. It reveals the name. Go away. All right, this one. Uh, uh, uh. You hear skittering motion coming your direction, Cassandra. As you try and evade your gaze, avoid, pull your eyes from these creatures and, and try to fan at them. Uh, you see something small and shadowy near your feet, and it, it stops just short, looking, not looking. It looks, well, you know what it looks like? It looks like a hand. It looks like a walking, severed hand. And it appears right below you, and it, it, it's attempting to grab up to your leg and move up your leg, but you manage to pull away just in time. So this hand is like walt walking around the bottom of your bottom of the floor, right in front of your feet. Let me reveal him to you on the map. You see this little hand appear. And what did you guys stumble into? I don't know. But there is another one. What strangeness. The Adams family, for sure. All right. Hmm. 
Okay, another one appears and it's going to attempt to grab hold of you, Cassandra. So you see two of these hands suddenly come skittering off of this shrine-like stone platform uh, just after these wispy glowing things appeared. What is your armor class again? You're not... 22. You are flanked as well, so in this case it's going to be a 20. Let me hotkey that and make it flat-footed. My computer would kick into gear here. Well, anyway. How am I flat-footed? You're flat-footed. You're being flanked. You can't see the second creature. Let me make it visible. Oh, okay. Trust me. <clears throat> you are flat-footed. Uh, so, yes, you are also hit. You're going to take some damage from this. Seven points of slashing, clawing damage as this this hand leaps up towards your chest and claws into your flesh. And just as quick, it begins to move towards your throat. You try to fend it off, but it's too late. It leaps towards your neck and begins to squeeze. So you are grabbed. All right. Now, to clarify, how I'm going to handle this is because you are technically grabbed by this hand, which is a tiny creature. You, you're not immobilized. You can still move. All right. I'm not going to say you can't move by this because this hand is grabbing you, especially in the neck. Uh, although it is possible. It will affect your movement if you do move. However, you will be flat-footed as long as you are grabbed. Okay, that still applies. You can attempt to escape, of course, or the creature could let go or move away from you on its own, and you're no longer grabbed. All right, so you have the grabbed condition. I put it on your token. Okay. And I think you can see all those creatures on the map so far. All right, Althea, you're up. Cassandra's being overwhelmed by wispy, glowing things and crawling hands. Of course, you don't really see this clearly, but <clears throat> you can tell by your screams. Hands! <laughs> I don't know. What does that sound like, Cassandra? You screaming? <laughs> It's joking you. Yeah, she, yeah, she can't scream. She's being choked. Well, Althea makes haste to advance. I can't let her companions uh, get too far and out of sight. How can she heal them? Uh, uh, so she advances and... will cast a spell. Uh, and she's going to aim for the hand tightly wrapped around Cassandra's neck. Okay. Would I inflict any kind of negative penalty? If so, then if it's too risky, Althea would instead ask a risk... Uh, not not risk it and attack the creature that has the sword. Probably. It's up to you. So. I, I have a hero point. We're going to attack the one grappling <laughs> Cassandra. Okay, go for it. And it will be with Divine Lance. I rolled a 25. That's a hit. Fantastic. Oh, sorry. I pressed attack instead of damage. Although... Oh, yeah. oh, you got a 24. I'm sorry. That was a miss. Oh, that was a nice roll, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, you got it. You got um, it. This was eight good damage. Good damage. And this is against the hand. That's this is against the hand. The one that's choking. Okay. I All do right. have sight of the both hands. I'm not quite sure which one is doing the grappling, but in the event, you know, I can see both. 
I'll let you do it because it's actually on Cassandra and you can see Cassandra. It's actually the one behind the token that's behind on the right side, I should say, of Cassandra. That's the one you're affecting oh. with the spell. That's the one that grabbed and choking him. The other one's just dancing around at her feet. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so I'll just aim for her neck and... And if it had missed, the, the Divine Lance would have just gone right through you if you were a good Cassandra. So no need to worry about friendly fire. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Excellent. Excellent. Indeed. And I think you're done. Yes. Yeah. So now we've got Sheppy next. Almost. No. <laughs> Almost. Then there's... from the shadows came another... Yes, creeping in the shadows, there was yet another little hand. Let's see which one it is. This is the imposing crawling hand. It begins to hop down off of this little stone shrine. Seeing a victim, it closes in. Now, I'm going to, I don't want to move. Well, you know what? Let me put him right here. Yeah, that'll work. And it's going to try and strike at Cassandra with a claw. Long nails that drag along the stone surface. Leaps up, the hand does, and it tries to grab and tear at your flesh on your leg. You are currently flat-footed, so... It's Should already be taken. Yes, it is. So, yes, it hits. It's going to roll a little damage. It's not critical. Four points of slashing damage cut into your leg. It tempts it again. So all around you are these little hands, Cassandra, just dancing around and lunging towards you, trying to claw at your flesh while one strangulates you. And these wisps dance around. I think somebody made a mistake coming in deep into this chamber. <clears throat> we will see. Uh, no, that one is a miss. Okay, now we get to Sheppy. You hear gurgling noises coming from up ahead. Actually, technically, you can still speak. Uh, if you are a spellcaster, your spell, if it has verbal, verbal components, it would take an extra action for that spell. That's the effect with it. So you can still speak, but it's going to be very raspy and stuff. It's not really squeezing you to the point where you're, it's causing extra damage, although it's very inconvenient. All right. And it does have you grabbed. So you'll be flat-footed. And possibly you're not moving this far. We'll see. Sheppy's up. You there, Rachel? Sheppy. You know, my brain's like... Where's Jesse? Why isn't he coming? <laughs> I figured something was coming Oh, the, the character sheet's right in front of me. I'm still like, hmm, why isn't Jesse saying anything? I hope he's okay. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, he's also going to move forward and try to use Shocking Grasp. He's actually going to take step right next to Arthurian. And uh, his targets are going to be... I believe it's 30 feet, so as he's casting, he'll target imposing and the one here that's also holding tightly. Okay. We're using meta magic, right? You have to use. I don't know. Reach. <laughs> You'd have to use the reach meta magic. I think it's an action to do that. And then your spell, in this case, well, you're using the electric arc, not shocking grasp. 
Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, so you got range on that anyway, I think. Yeah. My bad. Well, if we want to be technical, the hand that's grabbing Cassandra will be a shocking grasp once I electrify it. Anyways, <laughs> I'm making jokes. You are. <laughs> you are. Uh, yeah, so those are my two targets for okay. electric arc. Let me know if I need to roll damage. Oh, it's a basic save, so I'll go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Let's see, that'd be 11 electricity damage. All right, and this is against the one on his th on her throat and the one closest uh, to you, Sheppy? Yeah, impose. There's so many, so much text. There is. Uh, there's imposing crawling hand, and is it is that hateful or vengeful? Oh, force. The one that's injured and this one <laughs> for the basic save DC 19. Oh, it died. Mm -hmm. Oh, these fire slash electrifying what in this case and you know we we come across this all the time with Sheppy is it going to does every damage type change to his element as a sorcerer yes. or does his so it wouldn't be not, electricity not, damage not in this case if okay. not, electricity is electricity it stays electricity it's things like uh, wind and water. Okay, because I, I remember we've done hydraulic push, and that one was uh, a yeah. regular, like, flame. So, something like that. A force. It, it tells you when it changes. I think I marked him with asterisks. I don't remember. But he has it down, Pat. You're fine with the electric arc, though. That's electricity. Right. As far as I can remember, anyway. Either way, it's good. Uh, let me do this save here. Let's see. Where is the... That's the damage. Where is the save? There it is. DC 19. Let's roll that for the one around his... Her neck, I should say. And, yeah. Another failure. So that's going to be 11 points, I believe you did. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess as the electricity drained the life of one hand, it leapt to another. All right. So what happens is Sheppy steps forward. He begins doing these arcane gestures and shouts. The electricity begins to vibrate from his fingers, and he shoots it in the direction of the closest hand that he could see. And it just, you see it sparkle and shock and shoot sparks, and it just turns black. And as it dances off of that hand, it leaps up towards Cassandra, and you see the same thing going on at this one that's got her grasp around her throat. And it quickly also turns to black, charred, and it falls with a onto the stone before her. Both have been destroyed. Very good, Sheppy. Rachel. <laughs> I like this when they die. <laughs> Take that and that. The first one was particularly charred black because it was a critical. Critical mm -hmm. failure. <clears throat> okay. We'll go back up to the top of the round. But before we do, I need somebody to roll perception. I will. In initiative. Hold on. Hold on. Incoming. Oh. Nobody move. Nobody move. Including you as well. Uh, Dizzy. One second. Let Holding. us let us do this the most efficient manner possible. First of all, I gotta find your character. There it is. There she is. There she is. Alright, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Just to make sure that frightened condition that Sheppy and Althea gained, that goes away at the end of the round, correct? It doesn't have any other condition. I'm going to look at that in a second. I believe so. Uh, okay. At the end of each of your turns, the value of your frightened condition oh, decreases by turn. one. 
So yeah, you're you're frightened is gone, and so is Shepi's. Okay, good. Phew. Let me know when you want me to roll. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to do this. So you should be able to see Dizzy in your current location. Do you, do you see yourself on the map? I do indeed. Okay. Now, you've been listening. You've been hearing screams. Horrible screams and chants. You are curses. Could it be them? Have you found them at last? Surely you have. You've come a long way. You begin to move up to this door ever cautiously that lies just in front of you. You can, you can see that it's, it looks like some type of secret, hidden door. It doesn't have a normal handle on it, but a place to push, and it is open just a crack. Left ajar, perhaps, by the companions. And it's here that you sit, and you listen, and you see. Beyond the door, you take a peek. And you could just make out a strange, tall man. Somehow he looks familiar, but you're not sure who he is, and he brandishes some long sword. He's seated there on his butt, looking down at this blade. Next to him, you see a female, someone in type of type of clerical garb. You pull away from the, the door quickly, aghast at the sight. Symbols, symbols of the dawn flower. Yes, I recognize them. You hear more screams. You peer once again cautiously, averting your eyes upon these symbols of Seren Ray to peek beyond. But you cannot see the others. You cannot make them out, but you hear them. You hear voices. The clash of steel. Now, I'm going to put you in to the initiative proper. And I want you to roll perception for your initiative. You should be in... Let me see if you're in there. One second. I got a lot of things in this initiative tracker. Yes, you're in the initiative tracker. You should see yourself. Do you see yourself? I'm in there. Okay, if you would like, go ahead and roll that big D20 symbol next to your name in the initiative tracker. It should be defaulted to your perception. Just roll it. And we'll see where you land. Okay, as we enter this new round. Six. There you go. I see where you're at. So, when you come up in the round, you could take your action as normal. Okay. That's up to you, so think about that. Think, think about your next moves as you peer beyond this small this portal. <coughs> okay? But until then, we're going to go to one of these other creatures who's up first. Double check and make sure you're visible on the map. You should be. Uh... Okay, there we go. All right. We're going up to one of these glowing orbs that's near you, Cassandra. <clears throat> I do have to look at one thing to see if you are now immune. Okay. Go ahead and make a will save. Blind. Cassandra as this swarm of wisps just in 
entangles you almost. It's they're not touching you, but they're just dancing around you. These lights. All right, you are. You are confused. Let me put that on you. I jug that to your token. Now, confused. You're basically flat-footed. You're already flat-footed. You don't treat anyone as an ally. Okay? And you can't use reactions, delay, or ready. All of your actions are determined by the GM. You are, in effect, confused. You are mine. So when we get to Cassandra's turn, we'll see what happens. And let's see how long that lasts. Let me make a note here. Yes. Okay. And, all right, Cassandra, you are up next. Uh, I'll let you do this, but I'll tell you what to do. Your, your actions have to be to attack or cast offensive cantrips. That's all you can do. The targets are determined randomly by the GM. If there's no other viable targets, you attack yourself. All from the confusion of what's, what's happening to you right now. These strange, dancing, wispy lights have confused you beyond belief. There's so many of them, you don't know what they are. You reach toward them at this point. You, you, you try to fan them away, but it's to no avail. You're just looking left and right and in awe, wide-eyed. Okay, so that's the situation. So what would you like to do? Would you like to attack or cast a cantrip? I don't think you have cantrips. I'll attack. I'll attack. All right, let's determine which one it is. You do have opponents, however. You refuse to attack the lights themselves. You do see a hand, however, crawling, dancing in front of you. The first one that appeared. Go ahead and attack it. That would be this one right here. No, it didn't ping for me. You see where it is. It's right in front of you. But for whatever reason, you refuse to attack at these lights. They're somehow pleasing in a way, yet confusing, but pleasing. They're not harming me. All right, 25. You hit. Normal. No, that is a, that is a critical. I'm sorry. We'll double what you get here. So you get eight. Eight points of... What kind of damage is that? Slashing. Slashing. All right. Eight points. Succeed at a DC 20. No, no, no. That's only if it's uh, my stunning, my flurry of blows, which I did not do. Okay. So minus eight. Slashing against this hand. This little hand creeping along the floor. You, you lash at it left and right with these tiger-like claws. I have claws, too. Okay. Next. You've badly injured it. Critically, in fact. Anything else, Cassandra? Well, I have two actions left. Can I continue to attack? Yeah. Right. All right, 25. That should be a critical. Another. It's a critical. Crit. Yep. So double this. Or just roll critical. Ah, 16 points of damage. Once again, slashing. Describe how you destroy this hand. I just uh, launch forward, and my fingers fit easily within the fingers of the clawing hand, but then I press forward 
bend them backward and I break it in half. Ouch. All right, you finished off the hands. Now, at this point, uh, let me see there. I believe there's a, yes, there is. There is no more hands around you. You've The one that was on you fell singed and burned thanks to your friends, but the hands are no longer within your view. Just these wisps of glowing energy. It looks like maybe three separate entities are dancing around your head. There is a fourth one further away from you. Uh, but you, 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 you're fascinated at this point by these wisps, as well as quite confused. Uh, you're done. Yep. Next, we're going to come oh. back to... What's that? Uh, just interjecting. The creature is no longer dazzled. Yes, you're right. Good for the creature, bad for us. <laughs> you mean bad for me? Well, Shippy's there now. You don't know the preference of the creature. Oh, it's Although personal it's been a... now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think by this point, maybe. <laughs> Is that Does that end at the end of your turn? Caster's yeah, turn? it was at the end of my turn. Okay. All right, so no more flat checks for him. Time to finish off this dwarf. He lets out a scream. Oh, by the way, that little fl that flaming sphere is gone. That disappears. Yeah, I didn't maintain it. Yep. But it lets out a scream, Arthurian, looking down at you. It sees the approach of the goblin, but pays it no attention. And once again, it rains down a series of strikes with this sword. Ah. And the first one misses. You're lucky you easily deflect it. You don't have your shield, do you? Ah, uh, just a two handed Warhammer. Mm -hmm. You easily deflect it to the side. But it comes around again with another one. This nasty, strange, almost glowing blade and this one finds its mark however you were not prepared for this strike you'll take some normal damage and also give me a fortitude save as it once again cuts into your flesh you're going to take 13 points of slashing damage And as it cuts into your flesh and pulls and tears away, you feel even more of your energy being siphoned from your body. It's drained three. It looks in the direction of the goblin at this stage. What is Sheppy's will DC as it looks menacingly at this goblin? 17. Bearing its fangs and it lets out this horrific sound howling towards Sheppy. However, Sheppy... Such things don't bother you. Perhaps you return the favor and look back at it and bear those nasty yellow fangs of your own. You're unaffected by its intimidation with a critical. Nice. Yeah, you will. I can just imagine he'd be like... Look, I don't brush my teeth either. <laughs> All right. Let me retcon that because that was actually an intimidation roll by Arthurian. I was clicked on the wrong token. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me do it again. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, he rolled a one for our third, and he got a seven on that. That was critical failure on that. Let me retcon that. Let's do an intimidation Alrighty. by this white on Sheppy once again. Here we go. What was the DC again? 17. 17. And it is a 29. Okay, so it's totally... And now it's pretty much the opposite. <laughs> yes. All right, so... Was that critical success? <clears throat> 10 plus. Yep. Wow, I wasn't prepared for that. Let's see what happens to Sheppy. Uh-oh. He's going to be in trouble here. That was an intimidation. I was attempting to... Uh, attempting to... Uh, forget what it's called. Demoralize. All right, so demoralized. Target becomes frightened too, so give yourself frightened too. Sorry. Took me by surprise. <laughs> so once again, Sheppy's scared. <laughs> I've got to get out of here, Althea. I don't like this place. All right, so that happened. We're going to go to the next creature. Let's see if I can whip through these guys. Where is this one? These strange flickering lights. Let me get rid of these. Make this a little bit easier on me. This creature here. I think it's that middle one. Sorry, it's a little slow for me here tonight. Uh, let me think. Uh, Yeah, it continues to flicker around your head, Cassandra. It doesn't attack you, per se, at least in your eyes. Uh, there is another one, which likewise just hovers and continues to dance around you. Up on the stone pillars, or the shrine, perhaps we want to call it, there is movement. You see something small and black, perhaps another one of those hands, Cassandra. You just catch it briefly, just move out of your sight. And that's it. Okay. Got it. All right, Arthurian, you're up. Okay, otherwise these lights are just where they are. Actually, let me move a couple of them a little bit before we move to Arthurian. I want to put this one here. And this other one move to right here, closer towards Sheppy. Because that's really what it looks like. They're all around you. there and yes Arthurian you're up next keep hammering away you will keeping it simple here 18 18 is going to be a miss you're just drained your blows are not effective they're weakened not yet anyway you drained three, correct? Same exact number. Both times. For the headbutt. 17 on the headbutt. Nope. Oops. 
swung and a miss, struck out. All right, so that affects your constitution, not your ability to hit. So, okay. All right, you're done with that. It's your turn, Dark One. What's on your mind? You've been watching this unfold. You don't clearly see what's happening but you continue to hear the sounds of this battle. You sense the presence, a familiar presence, of death, decay, of undeath, as well as the presence of Saren Ray. Go ahead, Dizzy. Feeling the presence, she's going to be maybe wanting to get away from it, but at the same time, hearing the screams, hearing the sounds of battle and everything, she doesn't know if she's losing time, if she's not going to take the risk. So, what she's going to do is she's going to come out of the doorway. Okay. I'm going to put Tamira into the tracker at this stage as you've made your presence known you'll also note that you have the light spell cast on your what would you like to cast it on it's what you currently have light with which helped you on your way to tracking these companions and then she is going to move up She is going to move up there. Okay. Looking around, she's immediately, her focus is on the creature that Arthurian is fighting. And she's going to be casting Admonishing Ray on the creature. On the creature? Put that in the chat. Let's see what that's about. A ray of energy bludgeons your target into submission without causing lasting harm. When you cast this spell, you choose whether the ray feels like a strong punch or a slap. Make a spell attack roll. The ray deals 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Now, is the target the wraith? Or the white, sorry? It's the white. All right, he's going to have a bonus to his armor class. Arthurian is a, a big dwarf. So, go ahead and make your attack roll. Your spell attack roll. And that's going to be a clear miss. So the energy that you produce, you're unsure of. You can't go to get a good bead on this dark, shadowy being with a sword in its hands. Arthurian, this dwarf. You don't know his name. But you know he's a dwarf. Is just getting in the way. The energy dissipates around and above Arthurian and the white. Totally ineffective. You're done. Okay, so you've made your presence known. Now, Althea, Sheppy, Arthurian, to some extent, you are engaged in battle. Maybe your attention was briefly caught to your rear as this sudden appearance and feeling of dark energy, even more so than the white itself, has made its presence known. That's up to you. But Althea, if you want, you do see what's happening. Tamira clearly sees the presence of this new person into the conflict who stands there watching her pass by and is about to react to that. But before that, we come to Althea. Uh, Althea is like uh, mid uh, trying to cast a spell when this ray is going by. So she like does a double take. Uh, but she casts a three-action heal to heal everybody. <laughs> That's the... 30-foot radius. Everything and everybody yeah. with the undead trait is about to take some positive energy damage. Or healing. So go ahead and so if roll you're that. being healed... Uh, it's 12 hit points. 
Undead have to make a savings throw, I believe, right? Yes. DC, they do. DC, uh, 20. DC 20. All right. Dizzy, go ahead and make that uh, fortitude save for me. Again? Again? <laughs> well, you don't know what's going on, so. I don't, but again. <laughs> Let me check something here. Okay. Where is that little sneaky hand? There he is. And then this guy. I guess it gets cast even down the hall. <laughs> it's the little radius thing. Uh, What'd you do, 12? Yes, 12. And it's a basic, so I guess even if they do succeed, they take half. Right. So, where's your roll, Dizzy? Megan? You make a DC 20. Is it DC 20? Just, just make a will save, or a fortitude, sorry. Fortitude savings throw as this positive energy starts to engulf you as it does everyone in here. Should have been private, but that's okay. Blind. And with that, you fend it off. Uh, no, that was a success, so that means you take half damage. So six points. I believe, right? Yeah. Six points. Six points of positive damage. Your body writhes with pain. You've felt this many times in the past. As you hear these mutterings coming from up ahead, obviously the sounds of, of some deity. And it's then, as this occurs, that you do spot the source of this this energy that hits you hard. There you see the small little gnome. You've seen her before. You know who she is. You feel the power and presence of Desna. What's the distance for you? Is it 10 feet? Yeah, it's 10 feet. So, ten feet. all right. Since this is the first time encountering them personally, the companions, uh, Let's keep that in mind as you get close to what we discussed regarding Althea and Tamira. I have it written down my notes. Okay, so we'll let you role play this. We discussed it. So, okay. And with that, Althea Binley, you're done. She sure is. And at the very end of her little turn here, she says. Cassandra, you can fight it. I I can see you're struggling and just the weird jerky movements uh, through her confusion. She's like something's not right. Other she than you're surrounded by enemies. <laughs> Sheppy, you're up. True enough. Uh Sheppy is going to try to do two birds, one stone. He's going to cast electric arc again, this time aiming for this creature and the wispy one to Cassandra's left, right? This one. <laughs> I gotcha. The one directly in front of Sheppy. All 20, yeah, 15 yes, feet exactly. Away. Gotcha. Exactly. <laughs> That's a DC 18. <laughs> <laughs> First one success. It's a basic? Yeah, so roll your damage. Let's see what happens.
the first burst of energy hits this white that stands in front of Arthurian, Arthurian standing there stalwart as ever, taking blow after blow. But the right, the white, the, the white is taken aback by yet again and the strike of energy hitting at this, this electrical energy. And it almost falls back on its lack, back leg. You see an opening, Arthurian, but then it looks quickly back in your direction. Defensively, let's make another roll for this other creature to see what effect it has as this electrical arc dances or leaps from the white to the one just in front of Cassandra. And it's basic save. And what was your damage? 10? Okay, so it's going to take some damage from this. And it also feels it. Uh, well, actually, let me double check that. Real quick here. Since that is electricity damage. Oh, yes. Yes, it doesn't react at all to the electrical arc whatsoever. No effect. As far as you can tell. Okay. Go ahead. But the white definitely felt it. Near death again, he says. Not again. <laughs> In a strange turn of events, Sheppy's Sheppy's gonna try to just punch it. Wow. wow. It sees a worn out spot on the hip <laughs> of the white where Arthurian's been pounding his head into. He's like, I see a weak spot, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> He's gonna wail into it. <laughs> Maybe he bites him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think you can try to scare me away? <sighs> yeah. Go ahead, chomp down on him, see what happens. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, uh, broke a tooth. A <laughs> yeah, broke a tooth on that one. Ow! <laughs> Got a bone. Okay. Not Good. so much for that. <laughs> Good try. Round seven. Time for round seven. That's Cassandra, I believe. No, it's one of the creatures. Then Cassandra. All right, it's the one directly... Er, yeah, it's the one right behind you. To your right, Cassandra. All right. He's still under that confusion. Uh So it continues to dance around you, uh, Cassandra. You're up. 